Hi there, it's Marzena. In this video I want to show you how I made a doll figurine inspired by the animation The Nightmare Before Christmas. It was supposed to be a Halloween project, but I had to make some changes in my schedule. Luckily the movie is about Halloween and Christmas, so I think it suits both autumn and winter seasons. Ok, let's dive in! If you, just like me, love all sorts of animations and all that's creepy, you must be familiar with the Nightmare Before Christmas classic. Born in the creative mind of Tim Burton's and brought to life by Henry Selick and his amazing team, this stop-motion animation musical tells the story of Jack Skellington, the Pumpkin King, ruler of the Halloween town. I love this movie and all the amazing characters in it, but it lacks one thing. Where are the pumpkin creatures? Jack is the Pumpkin King and he wears his pumpkin head scarecrow costume at the end of the opening song. But besides that and some decorations at the beginning, there are really not that many pumpkins at all. And when I think Halloween, I think pumpkins. So I decided to make my own pumpkin character from the Halloween town. And because I enjoy creating sexy females the most, I designed a sexy pumpkin lady. This time I didn't care about the face mold, so I just dive into my spare parts box and created this Torali Abby mashup. Abby's forearms didn't fit perfectly, but I am covering the joints anyway, so I didn't care. Let's prepare our victim. First I cut off her hair as close to the sculpt as possible. Heated up her head in a freshly boiled water for about one minute. Then decapitation and glue and hair plugs extraction. With the help of 100% acetone, I got rid of her factory made face up. Time for the head shrinking. Some of you might say that the shrinking process was just unnecessary here because the head will be a pumpkin, it doesn't need to be proportional. But for me, head shrinking is always important. I usually shrink two or three heads at once to save time. And this was the first time I had a problem because of it. In the acetone solution, Totalize head lost her orange color and some of it went to Draculaura's head that has been soaking in the same jar. As I said, I didn't care about the doll's face here, so I decided to make some switcheroo and use this poor discolorated Draca instead. And here's why I decided to shrink the head even though it will be covered in clay and misshapen at the end anyway. It makes the head way harder, so you can't really squish it, which could ruin your sculpture if the clay cracks. Ok, let's destroy our destroyed head even further. Firstly, I decided to harvest her ears, as carefully as possible, so I will be able to use them in another project. Then I cut the holes for her mouth and eyes. I enjoyed it and felt really bad at the same time. Sorry. 
I also cut her head open and widened the neck hole. Next, let's prep the body. I trimmed down the neck pack, slammed down the neck and gave the whole body a good sanding treatment to get rid of the plastic numbers, seams and painted stripes. With the help of a hair dryer, I popped the head back on the body. Trimmed the face a little bit more and I was ready for sculpting. And there will be a lot of sculpting here. I started by layering the epoxy on top of the whole head, creating sort of vertical segments. Then I made the holes for mouth and eyes. I also decided to add a tiny nose hole to our pumpkin face. Sculpting with epoxy might be tricky at the beginning, but this material can really grow on you. I hated it during my first experience with it, but now I just can't imagine my workshop without the full stash of epoxy. Of course, it has pros and cons. It cures chemically, so you don't need to bake it like a polymer clay, and it won't shrink or crack like the air drying ones but it needs many hours to cure completely. So if you have a project like this, where you want to divide your sculpting process into multiple phases, it will take a lot of days to be finished. I added some teeth to the upper jaw and the day one of the sculpting phase was finished. Let's start day two. With a fine milling cutter, on a micromotor, I smoothed out the edges of the eyes, mouth and skull opening. I also drilled an actual hole for the nose. I mixed another bunch of epoxy and sculpted the teeth in the mandible and I also gave our girl a little more nasty face expression. With the help of a masking tape, I created the removable top of the pumpkin head. On day three, I could remove the tape and voila! So far so good. I decided that I don't need this much neck pack inside the head, so I cut it out. At this point I decided to reposition her head and neck a little. I didn't want to cut it off completely, but oh well. I then reconnected the pieces with a hot glue and a piece of a thick wire. The gap I covered with epoxy sculpt. Few hours later, when the epoxy was hard enough to not be misshapen by me by accident, I glued my doll in her final pose. When the glue dried, it was time for another episode of having fun with epoxy. A big fun! Cause we are going to give our doll a big pair of brand new bazookas.
When I was happy with their shape, I made some indentations so it would look more natural and fleshy after I will add the outfit. I also covered all the joints. Next day I started with a good old sanding. I'm trying to be as thorough with it as possible, to minimize the visibility of the epoxy to plastic transition. Ok, what's next? Oh yeah, more sculpting! I gave her those weird spiky shoulder pads, just like the ones in my concept sketch. I wanted her to fit the aesthetic of Tim Burton's films and Halloween Town, but I also didn't want to copy any existing elements from it, like the patches on Sally's dress. This lady will have a little bit more edgy style. To imitate an actual fabric, I sculpted the edges of the cleavage, the ruffles on the turtleneck and the sleeves, and some small wrinkles here and there. Another day started with more sanding. And more sculpting. Of course, I could try to sculpt everything in a day or two. But by working in sections, I could have a good grip on my doll without smooshing the parts I have already sculpted. It is always better to take your time instead of rushing things, especially when you are doing something for the first time. And this was my first time sculpting an outfit on a doll. Well, I made some stuff from Warbler Thermoplastics, but that's a little bit different. I could use some Monster High shoes, which I have a lot of, but I really wanted to use this opportunity to practice as much as possible, so of course I sculpted them too. It was fun and even though they didn't end up perfect, I'm pretty pleased with them. After making this girl I can honestly say that I don't feel like a lost cause anymore. I have so much to learn and practice, but I really enjoy it. I mean, sculpting, of course. My lack of sculpting skills was very shameful for me when I was a makeup artist. I loved special effects and I really wanted to get better, but somehow I never had enough free time or determination to actually practice. Now I can see how much I missed by not pushing forward. So guys. If you want to get better at something, whether it's sculpting, drawing, playing an instrument, just practice. Stop selling yourself bullcrap about talent, that someone is better because they are more talented than you are. I don't believe in talent. I believe in hard work. Practice and learn and you can achieve everything. If I could sculpt a decent pair of tiny shoes, Everyone can. While the second shoe was curing, I went back to my pumpkin top. I smoothed the rough edges just a little and I drilled the hole for the stem. I wanted it to be detachable, for now. I just thought that the stem with the vines will be easier to paint that way. I also placed a little block of epoxy inside, so it would prevent the top from slipping from the head. Ok, let's go back to the outfit. I decided to create the base for the skirt from a piece of warbler. I also altered my original design a little bit and I gave the skirt those two pointy ends at the back and a shorter front. I finished the skirt with epoxy.
I also made a Jack Skellington inspired bow from Warbler and a little epoxy bat for a belt buckle. Carefully I drilled holes in the shoes and glued a piece of wire in each one. And with this step, all my pieces were ready for priming and painting. I sprayed our girl with Vallejo Grey primer and started adding some base colors with acrylic paints. I painted the shirt yellow and the skirt, leggings and boots black. For the inner layer of the skirt, I chose purple. I applied two or three layers of paint for better coverage and to minimize the visibility of brush strokes. Then I used a liquid mask to cover everything that I have already made. It allowed me to use airbrush on all the fleshy parts. Airbrush is less precise than a brush, but it gives much more even coverage. To apply the mask I used a brush here, but I would recommend using a cotton swab instead if you don't want to say bye-bye to your brushes. I mix the proper skin color with an airbrush thinner and put two coats of it on my doll. When the second coat dried, I covered the neck with more liquid mask and used an airbrush again to apply the orange color on the pumpkin head. Okay, all the basic colors were done, so it was time to remove all the masking. It was a very satisfying process. After a few fixes here and there, I took a thin brush and I painted lots of lots of white stripes on the skirt. I sprayed my gal with two layers of MSC and with soft pastels I started to give the sculpture some more depth. As I said many times before, blushing and shading is not my favorite part of the customization process, but it does bring a doll to life. I used some dry brushing technique on the boots and I painted our girl's amazing nails purple. With the same color I painted the shoelaces. And I finished the boots with some dark wash. Then I took a dotting tool and made many many little dots on the shirt. I just thought that more patterns will make the outfit more interesting and create a little more Bartonish look. So far so good. The next part required a bit of courage, cause I had no idea will it work or not. First I applied an even layer of rubber top coat on the leggings, started with one leg only, as an experiment. This is a nail art product, not a typical crafting material. I cured it under the UV lamp. The rubber part means that it creates a dispersion. It's a sticky layer on top that I really wanted here. Thanks to this sticky layer, I could apply a shiny nail powder on top for a cool shimmery effect. 
It looked good, so I repeated the process on the other leg. I fixed it under a layer of a regular UV resin. With the same technique I made the belt. The bow, the bat and the pumpkin top I painted off camera. And the doll was ready for the assemble. Cool. The only thing left to do was to destroy it. I meant the only thing left to do was the stand, but yeah, let's do that too. I fixed the result of my morning shenanigans with a super glue and I could finally start working on the stand. I will be using this box, but to make the lid a little bit thicker, I will cover it with some XPS foam. I cut it to shape and carved some pavement patterns on top. Then with a milling cutter stone I gave my base some texture. I did a small test to figure out which glue will be the best here. You can see an indentation where I put contact cement so it will be a no-no for gluing a styrofoam. Super glue worked great though. I drilled a bunch of holes and all of them will be important. To make my foam sturdier, I covered it with 4 or 5 layers of watered-down Vicol glue. When the last layer dried, I sprayed the whole stand with black spray paint and I also used this granite look on the pavement. It has these cool particles in it. To finish it I just shaded it a bit with an airbrush and fixed it under a layer of MSC. Okay, I chose a box for the stand because I wanted to decorate it with some jack-o'-lanterns and I wanted them to light up. That's why I drilled those additional holes. I am no expert when it comes to soldiering. I barely know what I am doing and working with LEDs is always a nightmare for me. So here it is, my actual nightmare before Christmas. How ironic. No, 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 But in the end I succeeded. A true Christmas miracle.
since there is already so much sculpting in this video, I will give you a break and show you the already sculpted pumpkins. And boom, they are also painted now. I glued my jack-o'-lanterns over the LEDs and you could say that the project was finished. Wrong! We still need some snow. It is a nightmare before Christmas after all. I smeared the snow paste here and there. It was great for covering the wires sticking out from the shoes. And I finished it with a few strokes of liquid frost. And on the next morning, voila! My Halloween, I mean my Christmas project was done. This project was something else for me. But I am really glad that I did all that sculpting and LED slides. Every project like this is a step towards getting better at creating my one-of-a-kind art. I am also happy that I managed to make this little tribute to my beloved animation while still creating my own character. Designing and creating an outfit was also fun. I will definitely sculpt some more clothes in the future. But don't worry, there are still plenty of the regular naked ladies on my schedule. Okay, so what do you think about my pumpkin lady? She looks a little bit like a Susan to me, but I think I will call her Pum. Who do you think she would be in the Halloween town? In my head, she is a cousin of Jack Skellington that Sally didn't know about. So she would be a little jealous and intimidated when she would see her with Jack for the first time. I know, honey, she's just my cousin is such a cliche, but well, I'm a lousy storyteller anyway. Let me know what you think in the comments. I hope that you enjoyed this a little bit different Christmas project of mine. If you did, please give this video a juicy thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and ring that bell button to be notified of my future doll art shenanigans. Thank you guys for watching, happy holidays and see you soon! Ślicznie.